the last two games here on Storm Point as we head into what is now match number five. That might be enough to push them into, say, a fourth place position. I don't see them and or Moist battling for Exo and Chicken Sandwich in the in the, se the second and third place battle. I think those two are going to have to settle for fourth and fifth respectively with obviously Northside Esport there to try and play spoiler. And, you know, they've played well today, Northside Esport. You know, they're not necessarily in the conversation overall standing wise, but Ooh. they're in the conversation for today. Okay, we're actually getting a fight here between Azu from Golden Sage and Waltzy. It's a, it's like a pure 1v1. So both of these players uh, were going for the beacon, which lands above Cascade Falls. And you can see the Eva of Azu has actually finished off Waltzy. So wow. um, the other Golden Sage members, uh, as you can see, pretty far away. Um, oh my god, these guys are so spread out. <laughs> They're actually taking two 1v1s at the same time. So Mobius uh, is going up against Dexter from Evo Clan on one side of the map, while Azu is grabbing the scan and Waltz's scalp on the other side of the map. Meanwhile, Jipe is just chilling. He's over where they're sort of supposed to be landing in Ski Lift. Um, but yeah, wow. Golden Sage, talk about being spread thin. Yeah. I, in the end, is it really going to make that much of a difference with Moist Esports. I think in a sense, it, it obviously just delays them. It's not ideal. They will get Waltzy back already. So it's really, really quick. But in the grand scheme of things, when we actually take into account the way they had to play the last game, they were gate kept, they had to rotate late, they were in the zone. This is nothing. This is nothing compared to that last game where, um, who was it? Was it Waltzy in the chat saying how, how much of a pain that last game was? And then they start this game with a play at 10 already. I'll be fine. A little bit of a hindrance. That's a battle. Well, it is a bit of a hindrance because this is an easy circle to read relatively. And I believe that they would have had a great rotation into it had they been able to get that. Sorry, Waltzy did get the scan off. Um, so they do have the info. But as you say, yeah, they'll be delayed a bit. He's already back on. He's already back. But unfortunately, he will have to, you know, resupply just a little bit. Another thing to note um, compared to the beacon that we had out. Um, talking about where all these teams were going to drop at the start. Um, we were wondering that with the absence of Stinky B, how that was going to affect things. And it does mean that free agents have been able to keep the wall for now. Up the top, you can see there. And it was Team Op who, you know, sort of took the high road and went down to ship full. That was left fallow. So... I won't expect this to happen again necessarily when we uh, see groups A and B fight for the third time. That is at least if, uh, you know, Stinky B can field a team that week. Uh, but it's interesting that uh, it's shaped up like this. You can see most esports in the way here and that circle is telling us that it's going to be uh, very much a north pad finish. And I cannot tell you enough, Xenox, how good this is for Truth Esports because when you get a hard pull, onto north pad like this it means that the catwalk is just a genuine god spot and who's going to be good up there at range where you, it literally spawns sniper attachments for you nutsuru san right so this is this is a really good pull for truth esports and hopefully um they can capitalize on that yeah, and really hard to sort of push onto that catwalk even more so when you've got those fences, you know, basically looking to deter any thought of, you know, a sky would dive onto that location early and or late game. So, yeah, we'll see how Truth are going to play this. Of course, it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to hard pull onto them the entire way through. It may eventually shift off of it. And then at any point you're coming down from a high ground position, you are going to feel that if there are a lot of teams still alive, they are looking in your direction. So you kind of got to make, uh, hey, while well, the sun's shining in this instance for Truth Esports, get some damage in, build that Evo up, get some kills from this high ground position while you can, while you are in essentially the God spot. Yeah, important to take advantage of these situations when they come to you, right? When they, when they do get dropped in your lap. MDY White in the trenches now with quite a few other teams. We see Hermagerd over in checkpoint, just uh, kind of wondering why they're alone at the moment because they don't have that beacon knowledge. A little bit lonely. <laughs> Oh, 
A lot of teams already starting to congregate over towards this north pad area. And yeah, as you said, obviously, we're good. Over towards checkpoint. At the very least, not too far away from the main action. So, not the end of the world. And they also do have the Wraith, right? So, I don't mind the Wraith in this situation for them. Especially late game. If they do have to sort of portal their way in, they certainly can do that. Pushing close by to Northside Esport, who would be the team essentially blocking them at the moment. Still a lot of teams that have a lot of rotating still to do. One of them being MDY, who are really struggling in the zone over towards Launchpad. They now obviously have to make their way to... And then on top of that, Chicken Sandwich over towards Stormcatcher, Exo Clan as well, just south of Command Center. Actually, both of those two teams might even just engage on each other if Exo Clan get any sort of an idea that Chicken Sandwich are pushing their way somewhat of an early gatekeep very far to the east. Yeah, I'm not certain if uh, Exo have actually picked this out. Yes, now they definitely have shots ringing out. Um, meanwhile. 3030s also popping off. Looking, Looking over down beast with 505. 505 are just chilling. They were united. Actually have a team on them in free agents. The team just getting sent back, gets cracked essentially. They were united, probably done their best work on the edges these fights more so towards the later portions of these games they're gonna have to fight early in this one oh from a crack to a down onto Cassands. nicely done for balkan and i think this is where free agents just have to go they have to just take this fight in its entirety this flash gets knocked back it's at least one for one still alive as well easy flash still with a bit of armor bastion just trying to pop the bat oh and gets pushed easy flash is down it's only bastion left they were united gone and last a big fight win for free agents it's been the perfect kind of day for Day with United, but a blip, finally. They're human after all. They have had a bad game, apparently. Yeah, they were a little bit daft in that game, that's for sure. And uh, Old and Sage are going to make them pay for it. Bigsy trying to crawl away, but they'll probably grab him before too long. And it's only going to be Lahim. He might not survive for long either. He doesn't got he, he, no heartbeat sensor for him. There you go. It's MDY discovered him. Fast movement may help him get a little bit further out. Just popping all of his smoke canisters, but the scan coming through from the Bloodhound. Not only that, they've got the Digi threat as well. His shield battery gone almost as soon as he uses it. Is he seriously going to get away? He's detected by the drone now, as if the Bloodhound wasn't enough. They're even popping Beast of the Hunt to chase him down. Oh, man. That's so harsh. When you're thirsty, you're thirsty. And you want that kill, you will do anything to find it and get it. Asa pops the bat back up to full armor, although immediately takes some shots. Smack the other uh, white can crack the QQ. MDY I have to be careful that they don't put themselves in a worse off position. As it just sort of quietens down a little bit here into the second round. Still just 17 squads remaining for a 19 squad lobby. This circle does continue to pull the way of North Pad. Obviously for Truth Esports still sitting pretty on the catwalk in terms of an update for them. Double purple armor now from all of the EVO that they've been able to, to sort of build up. When the side gen still left on blue. No kills yet from that position. So good position for the circle. They've got position, but nothing really to show for it just yet. So clan chasing down the remnants stud of MD White. Quite locked on to where he's gone yet, and he's gone well into the zone. Him and his two med kits hoping to outlast this. Might just make it. Team up a little further down. Okay, coming up against Golden Sage, MDY in the buildings ahead of them. Very 
melee rotate from chicken sandwich. They'll be pushing in through checkpoint, which is still occupied by Hemagird. We still don't have intel as to where these circles are going. They're just sort of just playing it by ear. They will have to push forward through the canyon in front of them, right in towards north side esport. Both teams do have intel on each other. You can see those teams that are already in north pad probably will continue to just hold a hold these positions. Yeah, I think so. Moisture down the bottom. Truth still holding that high ground. They started off, I believe, with uh, a purple and two whites, and they're up to now two purples and a blue. Uh, of course, uh, I think uh, that's a lot off the back of you know, a scout. There's a longbow, there's a charge rifle up there, so they have uh, accurately supplied themselves with the weapons. Pump those armors. They really don't want to take flesh damage, I guess. I'm like... You can see EXO are doing to Dooku play uh, right here. Man, they've taken a lot of flesh damage. They need to pop those med kits before MDY, but it might be too late. They are right on top of them. MDY have been hunting this game. They want more. They might just find it. Castle, good damage from afar. Oh. Somewhat of an anchor position while QQ can just push forward. Right forward. And launch away, though. The shot's still landing, though. To get the knock, to get the down. So it doesn't Dex matter, though. Down. It doesn't matter because Dexter still kind of managed to get most of the way over there. But it's not them. It'll be MDY White who's actually trying to finish them off. And Dud managed to get one of his teammates back in. Thinking they've got the drop on Exo here, though, do they? It's only Zicky left alive. He can't even use his bullets right now. Just trying to get that last syringe off. Gets it in the nick of time. It's not going to be first, I don't think, for Exo Clan, but it's not going to be last either. They'll break their little streak. Unless Zicky can pull off the miraculous from here. Loki Dud right in front of him. In fact, I think he's winning that fight. Castle getting revived now. Exo Clan relying on Zicky to win this one versus one, and he cannot. Emmanuel just went out before them, but it's Exo Clan gone in 14th position. More points that have been left on the table from Exo Clan. They've had some high highs in this series so far, but some low lows as well. Zhu Ling forced back and has to probably heal up those shields. Yeah, rather unfortunate there for Exo. Trying to take the gravity cannon into the zone just to survive. Oh man, strafing flame. It's actually going to get taken down. Completely now, so Panna and play a K. Struggling alongside Boogie Borders, so two of those top Aussie teams, both down to a duo, and occupying the same space southwest. Through these sports, you can see, started to run out of ammo. Maybe up to Osu potentially. Get some of that if they can find an isolated death box where they can. Maybe pick up some sniper ammo. They've Even also got ammo. It's not yeah. looking great. Yeah, they got a bit of that left. They they got to really be really careful. Only take shield damage Ooh. as well because they can continue to rely on the pylons for that. Um, but you know, the flesh meds are going to be few and far between for them. Azu. Just taking some unintended damage here. Has to just drop down momentarily. Oh my god, we're able to successfully push out of checkpoint and not even take that fight with Northside, at least not yet. Maybe soon enough. Over towards the very eastern side here for Golden Sage, just boogie borders. Deep. What can they find? Having to play the low ground, being forced back by Chicken Sandwich, who do not have Strafing Flame. They've only got the two players. Back out to the east here with Golden Sage, making the push now onto MDY. They've got them low. Yuling is already down. They don't even have Kassa, and they don't have a lifeline here to save them. MDY gone, 13th position for them. Good push coming out of Golden Sage. Golden Sage up to five, Azu the kill leader with three, and as soon as they're out of that fight, they're into another. Bad, good hit by spray. Type A, no armor. Mobius, no armor as well. Both low on health. Azu has to probably play from the front.
front here for the rest of this fight. They've done well enough, though, to at least get those kills confirmed. On to Savior and Bunny Hop. Taking the right portal. Safety, it seems like. <laughs> maybe, maybe not. Has to go back. But Golden Sage are going to get a little bit of time. They're going to get a respite here to heal on up. Medkit will pop. They can honestly play now from the trenches and push up. Jolius is above. Are they going to be ready for this? Oh, you can see bullets streaming in from multiple angles. That was a great overview there. Boogie Borders going down. There were, of course, a duo. I wonder if that means if uh, the other ANZ team next to them is still alive. Meanwhile, Golden Sage have managed to win their way between all of those teams, get the med kits off. And now, as soon as that's done, guess what? Back to fighting. Yeah, Hammer Gurn eliminated, so now down to our final 10 squads remaining, and we will continue to head over to North Pad. And this is where, it, the truth is, sports, they're going to have to start to pick up some kills. They've got two to their name through Saiyajin. Still holding that catwalk position safely. Teams will have to play below them. Teams will even have to start to think about, do you Valk, do you, do you Skyward dive onto that catwalk? It is literally hard fed right on top of Truth Esports. Do not have to move. Their position is the god spot. You can see the overview of defenses. They are really fortifying that catwalk position. Jai Pei now into the trenches for Golden Sage. They push him behind. They get Jaro. That's good riddance gone. A big game coming out of Golden Sage here in match number five. Yeah, up to 10 kills now as they continue to push in. Uh, there's even a solo ahead of them. That's going to be Northside Esports gone and play a K. He's about to go down as well. Chicken Sandwich go down to the hands of 505 and that makes things a bit more simple for Golden Sage. They've got a duo of MDY White to their east and then they've got all the, te the teams they really need to push through in the, in the North Pad building. As you can see, 505, as well as SRY. So the eye of the storm moment here towards the final moments of match number five. Respite for these teams, but calamity to come soon enough, you would imagine. Seven squads remaining. North pad we go. Well and truly all the way north. There's still a couple of teams that have sort of failed to make their way onto the pad itself. Bit of a skyward dive here from Golden Sage. They do not go with the catwalk. They play the backside. They'll play in on below. The truth is, they'll at least avoid one of the maybe final teams that may have gone for it. They do not. They will hold God's ball quite literally in the heavens in this game. This is not good for Moist Esports. They were a duo when Golden Sage flew in and took their spot. Moist Esports can't really hold that. Because there's only the two of them, and you see MT is going down. Pricey has to find a spot to hide, and he is going to be ratting for the rest of this game. I don't know if there's going to be much more of this game remaining to wrap for. I don't have to hold on for too much longer. In fairness, we're getting towards the busy section. 505, triple purple over towards the south side of this. You can see pushing in now. Pricey, matches. Go, MD White now just down to LQ, done. Red arm up and gone, it's already evaporated. Mobius doing the majority of that. Zazu falls, it might be the, the end of this run for Golden Sage. It's been a, a dramatic run from them. No, it continues for just a bit longer. Mobius wins, survives. Full armor immediately with the swap, goes for the revive. There's more to this story for Golden Sage. Oh, no one really wants to push that. Mosu actually comes down from his perch up on that high ground to have a look at it. He's 18 away from red. Maybe he just wanted the upgrade. Either way, Golden Sage does weather the storm for now. All three of them back up alive. Five squads left with 505 being won. 13 hey. kills from Truth Esports above. I'm oh, sorry, from Golden East, Golden Sage, I should say. Now they've got to deal with Truth Esports above, though. That's going to be sort of the final boss. They have three kills to their names, but potentially a win on the cards. That's the main thing. Oh, I mean, like, not only do they have the high ground, Xenox, they're almost smack bang. This perspective actually doesn't sort of 
give you the uh, the right idea because they're actually very close to the middle of the circle. Um, but they're so high up that that perspective makes it look like they're sort of uh, a bit in the other direction. So yeah, you're right. They're, they are the final boss. They'll drop down when they want to and no sooner. They've only managed to pick up a couple of kills because they've had to conserve their ammo a little bit. So only three so far from Truth. But uh, you would think there's a good chance that they can convert this. That said, they'll be dropping down with, you know, longbows and whatnot with probably no ammo left. Um, so they'll kind of be on one gun each at that point. A little bit of a disadvantage there from Truth in the way they play this, but it's picked them up some KP and definitely some placement points so far. Mm. Five squads left, final circle closing in. There's a sewer Truth. fight. Now down below with Matsuro Sama. Oh, he's actually spotted someone on the edge of the corner. That was full back, utilizing this fence as well. And the four squads, Arkstar perfectly placed by oh, Natsu Sarasama. Trying to just make his way back up. They cannot really get pushed on with all of those fences. Tried to make something happen. Hasn't quite worked out. But there's still more chances available for Truth Esports. Don't count the matches yet. Golden Sage making the move. This is basically just going to come down to a free for all. GQ catches the head of a Golden Sage player, though. Doesn't manage to grab the down. Gibraltar bubbles. You love them. You miss them. They're back in our final circles. And the defensive bombardment is too. These players haven't had much practice against it lately. And it's kind of showing here. But is that enough? Big Boss, the only one left alive. Golden Sage win. Wow. Somehow in all of this... We don't see true oh. esports come out on top. And it's the sewer rats. It's 505 that take out the win. I tell you what, Golden Sage were on maybe for one of the better games today. Had they won that, I actually would have maybe even claimed best win had they gone and got it, but not to be. They continued the trend in some ways of finishing second with a whole, whole heap of kills.